Great. Will, thanks a lot for taking the time this afternoon. Much, oh, much appreciated. Uh, what are you, about two weeks, three weeks away from your Bellator debut? Two weeks, debut? To, the day, two weeks to the day. Yeah. And uh, so let's start at the beginning. How are you feeling ahead of the bout? I mean, you know, stranger to traveling overseas, but I mean, it's fair to say that it's probably the biggest bet of your career so far. Yeah, it has been, but like, to be honest, it hasn't really felt any different than anything else. Like, with the South Africa fight, I was in South Africa already. It was kind of a bigger build up, a bigger buzz. I was doing pre fight press conferences and all that. This has felt like training for every other fight, man. I've had a lot of camps at this stage, so right now, it just feels like any other fight. But uh, hopefully, when I get over there and I get to Rome, I'll have that buzz and have that like excitement of everything. Right. Hasn't hit me yet, to be honest. <laughs> but, I was going to ask about that as well because you fought abroad so many times before. There'd be a bunch of fighters uh, who might be going over to shows like this and they've, they've not cut weight in a different country, they've not had to you know, source out their different food, you know, all that sort of stuff. You, this is, I mean, you've done this several times before. I mean, you're not like, you know, you have got, haven't got 20 professional fights or anything, but it's not going to be brand new to you. Do you think that's an advantage? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd like, look, the first time I went down anywhere and like fought abroad, it is a bit, you have to have everything planned mm -hmm. and you kind of over plan. Well, I did anyway, like I brought way too much stuff and I brought like too much, you know, I was just way too, like what if this happens, what if that happens? Now I know the essentials, I have a list, I know what I need to bring, bring all that stuff, chill out and enjoy Rome. And that's it, like it's like a lovely little kind of, you're in a different environment, you're in this new place, and it's like, I come here, I fight, mm -hmm. and I fly home. So it's like, it separates it, whereas like, when I did the fight even in Belfast, it's kind of like, you're in your environment up until the day beforehand, basically. Yeah. And you're like, should I be training? Should I be doing something? Whereas when you get somewhere else, you're just like, ah, oh, chill out. Yeah, yeah. All you have to do now it's is- almost like, like so that, that bubble that you kind of find yourself in can be limiting in a sense that you're shutting yourself off with friends and family, but you're, you know, have a dead eye focus on the task. I like it, yeah. No, I genuinely enjoy it, like, as in, look, I've yet to fight in the tree arena at home. Like, I'd love to fight in the tree arena. Yeah. But at the same time, I do think it'd be a different sort of, like, build up and a different sort of mental challenge. Right. With this, I fly away. I chill out for a few days, I go and I fight some lad, I smash them and come home. It's nice. great. Like initially the contract I signed with Brave stated that if I beat Tariq Suleiman, which I did, I'd get a title shot in Dublin afterwards. They then revealed that they weren't gonna fulfill that. Um, they were in Belfast in the end. So I was pretty much lucky that I had that in writing. And um Bellator expressed an interest after I beat Tariq and John set it all up and it was pretty much John who made all this happen, which uh, I'm very, very appreciative of, but yeah, like as soon as I knew they were interested, I was yeah. really gone to get signed by them. And who did you, when this sort of deal comes about, I'm sure a lot of people are interested in like, what is it, you get an email from Bellator saying we're interested or? I had very little direct contact with them right. until I got the contract through, yeah. but uh, John had told me they were expressing an interest, so right. it was just, it was, you know, it's kind of any sort of courting relationship, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> They might be interested, yeah, yeah. and then you're obviously pretty interested too. So you just wait, 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 and right. then eventually, about two weeks later, a contract came through. Nice. But, uh, I mean, obviously, you've, you've what, what, including your amateur career, you're looking at what eleven or twelve fights. So eleven or twelve. Well, what? It's eleven fights, and then two in the show as well. So yeah. thirteen. Um, and then I've been preparing for another probably 15 fights that didn't happen. That's so right. I've, you know what I mean? So I've done like 20, 30 camps. I was going to say, you could be sitting here in front of me today and you could be 10 and 0. Yeah, easily. Does um, that, is that, like, I mean, that sort of, the, the regional scene in MMA is notoriously uh, difficult sometimes. You have, like, you've experienced sometimes that they're quite a step and out last minute or, you know, people not cutting weight the correct way and they have to withdraw for that particular reason. Whatever it might be, there's loads of different reasons why fights kind of, kind of fall apart. Um, how, that must be super frustrating, right? Of course it is, yeah. Um, I think the thing is, you use it. You can't let it dishearten you. And it is like, look, it's incredibly frustrating. There's no more, like, you've done everything. You've prepared as best you can. You're so invested in this. Yeah. You've given up your whole life for six or eight weeks. Yeah. And then boom, nothing happens. And you go home and you sit on the couch and nobody cares. Yeah. Literally like, I'm sitting here to you talking about it now. We can all acknowledge it. But back then, two years ago, three years ago, nobody gave a shit. I just went home and sat on the couch. Right, yeah, yeah. And nobody goes, ah, oh, Will's a really good fighter, but he just can't get fights. They just go, ah, oh, sure, he hasn't really fought yet or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like, I have that opportunity now, and I'm determined to let it show. And look, the work was been put in back then, mm -hmm. so it stands to me now. Yeah. But I'm still like, it'd be much nicer if I was 10 and 0. And that does still rankle with me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, I still have that inner frustration due to that. But harness it, use it. Exactly. Like, let it be a positive for you. Yeah, yeah. You can't, like, like, I was very close at times to letting that disheart me and go, fuck this. You know, I'm training so hard, I'm putting everything into this. My whole life has gone into this sport. Yeah. 
and I get nothing back out of it. But I, I'm in a position now where I can reap those rewards. Exactly. Like, I was going to say there must be some sort of silver lining to it. In well, there is sense, because the fact that you, you hear that old adage in the fight game about how particularly people of your age and things like this, they improve so much from camp to camp. And you've obviously had these camps where you didn't really get to show up, you didn't get to go to the, yeah, you didn't yeah. put the paintbrush on the canvas, so to speak, you just got to mix your paints. I think um, I'm lucky in the fact that I'm a guy who believes in the work I put in. So had I been a type of fighter who was like listening or, you know, even just susceptible to like what the average kind of buzz is around the thing, I'd be in that situation, I wouldn't have fought. I'd be like, oh, I'm a 2 and all guy still, or I'm a 1 and all guy sure. still. I knew back then, like even, I wasn't a 1 and all guy. I was a five, six, seven, and all guy. Exactly. Yeah. But I hadn't fought the guys. They never showed up. Like, mm -hmm. so I always had faith in that, and I always believed that myself. I'm going in five, five and all guy, and I feel a hell of a lot more experienced than I'm. I'm four and all, but like, I know, and he knows too. You know, when we look across each other, I'm gonna go, well, fuck you. I've been in fucking rough situations in sparring exactly. hundred times. I've gone through the hardest camps twenty times, thirty times. Yeah, yeah. Come bring what you've got. Like, part, like, yeah, yeah, and it is. It's yeah. kind of like come bring what you have, and you're yeah, not going to yeah. be able to match this. Like, yeah, was, so that'll stand to me. Are you yeah. the sort of fighter that uh, do? You, are you a tape guy? Do you like the tape? Or yeah, I do a bit. But like with this lad, the main thing was was he going to show? Because it was like I was waiting two and a half, three weeks to get a contract for this guy. Yeah. Uh, it looks like he's going to right now. We're two weeks out. Yeah, I've been sent a contract, so it all looks good. Um, so now I'm gonna go and invest heavily in what he does, like look at more patterns of like, see what I can kind of get from him. But five, six weeks out, like look, a guy pulled out for this fight as well. I was originally supposed to fight this guy, mm -hmm. Massimiliano Sarmascio. I went and did a bit of research into him. And then when it like, it got shifted two weeks ago to this guy, I was like, there's no point looking at the video yet. Like there just isn't because yeah, it yeah. could easily be a different guy on the Burned day. So many times like yeah. after a certain Yeah, and you do, it. you just get a little bit like, ah, I'm numb to this now. I'm just, you know, if he shows up, great. Like, yeah, yeah. but now it looks like it's going to show up. I've done a little bit of research for the last week. I'll do a little bit more of next week or two. But, yeah. uh, just a couple more, uh, more quick things. Who, like you obviously get very, very high level training in the SDG course course, yeah. and, and elsewhere, I, I presume, but who have been your main kind of sparring partners in advance of, in advance of this fight? Of this fight, um, I've actually been using John Redmond a good bit. Um, there's Guy Aaron Gwynn that I was sparring with just yesterday and I think we're going again on Tuesday. Um, I'm hoping to get a couple of other guys in, like I'm thinking Pascu's going to be back next week. I'd like to get my last big spar in with him because he'd be a real good test, like a very solid guy. Um, there have been like quite a few guys where I've done like light rounds with, the heavier rounds I did with John Redmond and Aaron um, so far. I've used a lot of different guys over that, like back, I think it was like the middle of May, there was that Bama card and we were all yeah. doing a lot of sparring. So I kind of got a lot of heavier rounds in then, uh, with Claudio and the likes. Right. But the protein is just massive in there. It is, yeah, it's huge. Like even like to be honest, like you're gonna ask me names, I can't remember everybody yeah, I've yeah. sparred with for this camp. Like there's been a lot of guys, you yeah, know, and there's yeah. just so many guys through the gates. Just an endless uh, stream of different. It is, yeah, and even like there's guys coming through and like it's a huge team and it fluctuates a lot. Like you know, yeah. for a couple of weeks there'll be a whole bunch of these guys and then there'll be a whole bunch of another crowd. So it's like it's a big hub of you know. Yeah top level guys but they're they're flowing like you know yeah, yeah. it's not one guy's always there it's not like you have the same lad which is great because you get used to different bodies and you get used to different kind of styles exactly, like yeah, the different strengths and uh, who's going over with you who's in your corner? John Phillips oh yeah 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 just yeah. him is it? Uh, John and John the two Johns are coming the two Johns okay yeah. very nice very nice so that'll be sweet yeah no I'm mean, like me and John Phillips are staying down until the Wednesday after oh okay. uh, so we'll go outside have you been to Rome before? no and yeah, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to getting yeah. over there. And I'm big into my history as well. Sweet so uh, well, hopefully get to see the Coliseum, hopefully get to go to Camp Pompey afterwards and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, no, I'm super excited There's about that. There's something kind of uh, appropriate about that, sort of fighting, you know, things you're speaking in the shadow of the Coliseum, you know, doing the history of that place. A wild gelt yeah. going out the wrong, <laughs> smashing up in the middle of it. Well, they've yeah. seen nothing until the next week or two exactly, weeks for them. Yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not, like, I've even I've listened to, um, Dan Carlin's hardcore history there last week, oh, yeah. the Celtic Holocaust one. Yeah, yeah. You know, and even like the last little bit where he's like, and they're still speaking the Irish in Ireland, you know, and it's Celtic <laughs> language, and you're like, ah, they haven't fucking killed us yet. So, yeah, no, I'm pumped, I'm pumped.